Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel. You got this. Where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my own struggles um, as a former patient of almost 20 years having borderline personality disorder. I talk about a plethora of other mental health um, issues, narcissism, bipolar, um, schizophrenia. I talk about therapies and therapists. Um, but I only talk about these things as a former patient. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not hold a degree in psychology, so I cannot give you a professional opinion. I not only ask in return of you one thing, please be kind to me, be kind to everyone else in the comments. Um, we need to have respect and kindness for all. We do not always have to agree on everything because that's what makes the world go round, but we do need to agree to be respectful and kind. Now, if you like what you see, give it a thumbs up there. And if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button. It's free. Now, how many of you guys saw the solar eclipse yesterday? <laughs> um, it didn't really go that dark um, here in the Boston area, but I've seen a lot of pictures on Facebook. And man, let me know in the comments, you know. I wonder if you can drop me pictures in the comments. Not sure. Um, but anyway, I'd love to know, you know, your experience with that. Now, today's topic is similar to that solar eclipse, is how I process my feelings as a borderline. So how I process my feelings having borderline personality disorder is very different than how someone else processes their feelings <laughs> who does not have this um, personality disorder. And it kind of reminded me of the, um, the, the, to uh, the, the eclipse yesterday, you know, kind of like sometimes it's like a total eclipse of the heart. Ever hear that Bonnie Raitt song, total eclipse of the heart where, you know, I just block out. It's like this, like total. This is bright. <laughs> Sometimes that's how it feels to me, like, like the, the moon is passing by my face and totally blocking everything out. That's exactly what I, I, I like, it's like midnight in the middle of the afternoon because, you know, that total eclipse blocking all my feelings, thoughts out. And then when it passes through, it's like, <laughs> it's like that, you know, it's like, then they all come, you know, um, so that's the analogy I'm going to give you of it. So let's talk about when it's totally blocked out. A lot of times when people say things to me, um, for some reason or, or another, I do not process what they say. And that's also called dissociation where, um, I'm hearing the words, but they're not having any meaning. It's like, um, if I'm in a foreign country, right. And like, I hear what someone is saying, but I, I don't understand it because it's a foreign language. <laughs> like being in, I don't know, Spain or France or Italy. Um, they're talking to me and I hear what they're saying. I can hear their words, right? But I'm not processing it at the moment, you know? So, you know, they'll, we'll carry on a conversation, yada, 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 and everything will seem, you know, okay, you know, right? It seems fine, uh, but then later on, after they're gone, um, it's been a, a while since we had that conversation, I'll hit replay, you know, and suddenly I'll remember what they 
said. And then, only then will I process what they said. So then I'll be flooded with the feelings. Um, so see, when I first initially have a conversation with someone, I don't process what they say. So I don't react to what they say because I'm not processing it. It's like they're speaking a foreign language, like I'm in a foreign country <laughs> and I can hear their words. I hear what they're saying, but I'm not processing what they're saying. It's not till later on when I hit play that I begin to process it. And as I process it, that's when it has, boom, you know, that, that impact on me. Like, what did she say? You know, and then I'll hit replay over and over and over again. You know, um, like for instance, to give you an example, um, if someone we're talking about, um, we're shopping, I mean, a girl pal is shopping in the store and, um, I'm saying, Oh, look at this dress. I think I'd like to get it. And she goes, Oh, that, that dress would show off all your bumps. I wouldn't get that. That wouldn't look, that, that wouldn't look good. And you would show off all your bumps. And then, you know, she shows me another dress. How about this dress? And then we go on and like, you know, we're going on shopping and, and then when I get home, all of a sudden, like, I'll be, you know, like sitting watching my soap or something, whatever I'm doing. Maybe I'm cooking dinner. It doesn't really matter, right? Say I'm cooking dinner. <laughs> I'm making chicken pot pie from scratch tonight. And I'm making the, you know, the flour and the and the um, butter, stirring a roux, and I'm going to put the chicken stock. Then I'll think, wait a minute. What did she say to me? When we were shopping, what did she say to me? She said, that I wouldn't pick out that dress because it would show off all your bumps. What? And then now I'm starting to get upset. And then I'm thinking about what she said. <laughs> and I'm replaying it over and over. And as I'm replaying what she said, I can feel the, the heat building up inside. Not just under the pot of <laughs> gravy that, that I'm trying to make for my pot pot. <laughs> but I can feel the heat building up under me and it's starting to swell and it's swelling and it's swelling and I'm getting really, you know, upset, you know. She has no idea that I'm upset, right? Why? Because I didn't react when she said that. I was completely, I didn't show any reaction to what she said. Like she was speaking French to me, you know. <laughs> I just smiled and, you know. This is how I process things as a borderline. Now, I'm not saying all people who have borderline personality disorder process things like me, process things like I do. If you have that, you, you can tell me how you process things. Even if you don't have borderline personality, you can tell me. You know, if someone says something that is hurtful or something or derogatory, do you get upset with them at the time or do you, um, do you even acknowledge what, acknowledge it at the time or, um, do you let it pass and do you replay it later? This is what I do. I replay it later. Like I took a special, like, you know, a little tape of it there and I hit replay later on and hit replay and, and hear it over and over and over. And now I can't get it out of my head, right? It's either like blocked, completely blocked, like blocked out the sun. So it's completely dark. And then once that passes over, it's like burning, you know, ultraviolet lights burning my flesh. You know, like when you get a, a real bad sunburn, right? Like if you're in Tulum, Mexico, like I was one time. And it's like over 100 degrees, <laughs> right? And you don't have any suntan. Uh, you don't have any... um skin protection on, you know, um, sunscreen. <laughs> I never use it. So, and you're starting to really blister and get red, red, like that lobster. Um, one time I got so red, <laughs> like this shirt, this red, <laughs> that my bathing suit stuck to me. I had such a bad sunburn. I couldn't take my bathing suit off because 
that was that summer. Well, then what happens next is, for me, is usually passive aggressive. Okay. Remember the woman in the example I gave that has no idea she, she hurt me because I didn't respond to it. I acted like, you know, so then once I finally, you know, replay it much, many hours later in my mind when I'm doing something else and then I, be, I can become passive aggressive where, you know, I'll, um, ghost her completely won't talk to her. Either this can go on for a short length of time or it can go, I can just like completely, um, end the friendship. Um, and then she's like scratching her head or, you know, wondering what happened, you know, because I didn't show any reaction at the time. She had no idea. Like a lot of times when people talk, um, they forget afterwards what they said. I'm, I'm the same way. Like, um, someone will say, you said this to me. Um, I did. When was that? You know, what did I say? So if you don't respond at the time, see, I think the mature thing to do would have been to respond at the time and say, what lumps, what are you talking about? Why do you say that? You know, that's not, um, that's a real rude thing to, you know, to say to me, you know, um, I'm hurt by that, but I, I don't process it. So how can I respond to something? How can I respond to what, what someone says when I don't process it, what they said at the time they say it? Okay. This is the truth. This is how I am. You know, I think it has to do with my borderline personality disorder, you know, cause I don't think a lot of other people, you know, who are like that, you know, um, don't acknowledge anything until long after the fact. Um, I was so bad at blocking things out. Oh God. That like, I didn't really process things about my abuse, my childhood abuse and my rape by my therapist until years later. That's how bad. That's totally like dissociating. That's totally like, um, whatever amnesia or whatever, you know, but it wasn't amnesia because I would remember what they said, but I wouldn't process it. See the, you see, see what I'm saying? Like I would remember they said this, but I'm not processing the feelings I have over what they said or they did. I was like that a lot. I would not process, you know, I would remember, I, I know, okay, they said this and they did this. But I wouldn't process my feelings over that. Somehow I would just shut them out like, you know, like a total eclipse. You know, the light would go out. That's the best way I can describe it. Like an, like a total eclipse. It would just black out. And I would not process that at all. I'm much better about that. Now I'm more psychologically aware. Um, I'm 58 years old. So when I had this, you know, I've been in many, many different therapies and, you know, I've gotten to know a little bit about psychology just from experience and I've gotten to know myself and my, you know, condition through, just through, just through experience. And, um, so now it doesn't take me that long to process. Um, I'm much shorter, you know, but yeah, that, that's how I would be. And, and then I feel flooded and the flooded and the flooded feeling is like, you know, I didn't notice. It's like your basement. If there's water in your basement and you, oh, you, you might see a little puddle and you, you know, you just ignore it. And then the water starts, you know, coming up a little more, <laughs> you know, it's, um, now it's soaking your rug and, but you don't really process it, you know, until, until you open the door and the water is like, a, um, an ocean, <laughs> like you can swim in your basement. But now I'm better at, you know, processing things when they're smaller, when they're that little puddle and be able to, you know, mop that up or fix what, you know, fix whatever is causing that puddle. Um, so I'm better at that um, through, through time and through, you know, analyzing myself. Um, but anyway, let me know if, if that happens to you. 
how you process things. If, if anyone is like me and has a delayed reaction, please let me know. I want to know, am I the only one like this? <laughs> All right, till next time. Take care.